Hey guys, welcome back to uh, the, the sessions we're doing on uh, the message of Divine Mercy for Our Lady of Assumption Parish. My name is Vince. Um, in the last session, we talked about how the Divine Mercy fulfills the Day of Atonement Feast. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how the Feast of Divine Mercy is connected to the apparitions and messages of Fatima. Um, but before we do that, I'd like to begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We thank you for this day and the great blessings that you give us. Lord, we pray for all those that have been affected by this virus, and we pray for an end to it soon. Father, we pray for all families within our parish and within the world, for all marriages within our parish and within the world. We lift up all priests and bishops, the intentions of the Holy Father. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, well, uh, here we are again, and I've got about the same lighting, and I've got notes that I'm going to be looking down at every now and then, so I asked, uh, just be patient with me. Um, I'm going to try and do this as, as concisely as I can. Um, the message of Fatima and the message of Divine Mercy are intimately connected, um, not only intimately connected, but actually bring each other to fulfillment. And um, so again, you know, bear with me. I'm going to try to do this as quickly as I possibly can and um, just get the, the vital information out. Okay, one of the things that I'd like to focus on is the, is the promise that was made at Fatima. So I'll start with that and then we'll kind of back up from there and then take the whole thing as a whole and move into the, the, the uh, conclusion of the presentation. Um, the main promise that was made at Fatima was that in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph, Russia will be converted, and the world will be given a period of peace. Um, the word peace to me jumped out when I was reading the diary of Faustina, and that's really when I started to notice the connection. And when I started to look into it more, um, dig deeper, you know, and really listen to what was being said, the more I looked, the more I found. And that's, uh, that's kind of what I want to share with you guys today um, as we go through this, okay? Um, we had the angel of peace uh, appear to the kids and then um, he appeared three times but in the it's the second and third apparitions of the angel of peace that I want to talk about specifically because that's really where we start to see the connections between Fatima and Divine Mercy um, in the second apparition the angel of peace were told or the angel of peace told the children told this told the seers to make everything they do as a sacrifice in reparation for sin now the word reparation is critical because it can be replaced with the word atonement. And when you start putting these words together, it, what they do is they form like a, like a chain or links in a chain that kind of tie the whole thing together. So as we go through this, I'm going to ask you to keep the words in the back of your mind. And then you, you know, you kind of start, hopefully start seeing the chain like I did. So we have peace, we have the promise of peace and we have reparation or atonement. Okay. Really, really important. Um, if we look closely at the third apparition and the prayer that the angel of peace taught to the kids, this is where it starts to get really, um, uh, how do I, almost, um, like you can't not notice it. Okay. He, uh, he teaches in the prayer and I quote, most holy Trinity, father, son, and Holy spirit. I adore thee profoundly. I offer thee the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ present in all the tabernacles of the world in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifferences whereby he is offended. Um, there's that word again, reparation. And this vision is very, very important. It is so important. And we, we overlook it all the time. Okay. And the prayer that's taught. Okay. So we have the word reparation, which again can be an ato mean atonement, but I adore thee profoundly. I offer thee the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ present in all the tabernacles of the world. That right there is an absolute um, giveaway because anybody that's familiar with the Feast of Divine Mercy and the chaplet can see that the chaplet is an absolute paraphrase to this prayer. I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement or reparation for the sins of the world. Now here's the key. This is the question we need to ask ourselves. When Jesus came to Faustina, it seems on its face that we were being given a new feast, a new prayer. Um, but the fact of the matter is, what Jesus was doing was emphasizing a feast that was already within the church. 
uh, Dominica and Albus. So he was giving it a new name and promising more graces and, and uh, greater promises through living the message of divine mercy. But it's the chaplet that I want to look at specifically here because the chaplet of divine mercy, the words, what it's doing is it's pointing back to the, the prayer that was taught to the three seers at Fatima. And it's an amazing thing that Jesus didn't, when he spoke to Faustina, he never spoke of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. He never spoke about the rosary. Um, what he did in giving the chaplet, the words of the, of, the, of the chaplet of divine mercy was to point us back to Fatima, to the, to the, the, the prayer that was taught um, by the angel of peace. I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. So we have to ask ourselves, why would Jesus be emphasizing this prayer that was taught by an angel of Fatima, okay, and not emphasizing the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary or the Rosary, okay, this kind of thing. And the fact of the matter is he does. He just does it in a different way, okay? Um when we when we think about the message of Fatima, those those of us that live it, um, I know for me, until I started to go deeper, I was just kind of kind of doing the things that jumped out. I was praying the Rosary. I did you know the first five Saturdays. I made the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Um, but the one thing that I I didn't do or or consciously do was to specifically offer my Rosary in reparation for sins. And this is something that the faithful need to say because when we offer a rosary or something that we do as a sacrifice in reparation for sin, what we do is we alleviate punishment. And I know that doesn't sound like a big thing, but in light of what the Blessed Mother told the children at Fatima, it's huge. If my requests are not granted, a worse war will spread out. It'll happen. And Russia will spread her errors. And the church will go through persecution. Um, she told the children that God allows war as a punishment for sin. That many souls go to hell because they have no one to pray for them. And so the message of Fatima, again, uh, like I said in the, um, in the first video that I did, um, is a call to us, to the church militant, to not, not just pray the rosary, but to get involved in this battle in this, uh, to, save, to help save souls and to keep the world from having to go through chastisements and punishments for sin. Okay, the first call of Fatima, again, is to amend our own lives. And um, that's a call that's been going on with the Blessed Mother for years and years before Fatima, you know, going all the way back to Lourdes. She has been screaming about um, sexual impurity in the church, um, the, uh, the indifference and the outrage that... Um, Jesus feels um, when we approach in the Eucharist, you know, we're, we're being called again to amend our lives. But the reparation is a key ingredient to this. This is really what brings um, peace into the world. You know, we don't have to go through such hard things. Okay, um, the other thing I'd like to look at is um, the third vision, okay? of Fatima. And I have a picture of it here. Hopefully you can see it so it's not too glary. And let's see here. That is the last vision of Fatima. It was given to Sister Lucia. And so what I want you to do is just kind of get that image in your mind and look at the images that are there. And I'll point them out real quick. There's Sister Lucia is kneeling before a Catholic altar the Blessed Mother is above her with the rosary, making intercession. That's Our Lady of Fatima. Above that is Jesus crucified, and he, he's dead at this point. The sacrifices have been made. Um, blood and water is gushing forth from his side in, in, and kind of turning into the Eucharistic species, okay? The uh, blood and water representing um, the Eucharist. And then above that, we have the Holy Spirit and God the Father pouring that Holy Spirit out over uh, over the world, okay, through the cross. So just kind of keep those those images in your mind as I as I go through this, and um, I think we'll start to see how these two are really really connected. 
Okay, the entire message of Fatima is not only prophetic, it is a call to the faithful to amend their lives, and not only less important than to make a reparation or atonement for sins of mankind, and especially those who are within the church itself. The first call is essential to be in a state of grace, but the second part of the call is essential to mitigate chastisement for sin. And this is, I, th I think this is the reason that the Chapel of Divine Mercy emphasizes the message um, uh, or the prayer that the angel taught the children. It, he's emphasizing the reparation that needs to be made. Okay, that's the key to the whole thing. Um, the central part of the message of Fatima can be summed up in the chaplet that was taught to Faustina, Faustina years later. Okay, so I'll go down these images if, and keep those images in your mind within, um, within that last vision. Okay, we have uh, a holy Catholic altar representing the Mass, so the Eucharistic sacrifice. The Virgin, uh, Mary, who is the new Ark of the Covenant. Okay, the sacrifice of Christ, who is at the same time the High Priest, um, who in the vision is already dead. Um, the Eucharist, the blood and water gushing forth from the side of Jesus. Um, these three, the Eucharist, the blood, and the water, are three foundations of the message of divine mercy. They're being revealed right there, okay? Um, flowing from the heart of Christ. Above that, we have the Heavenly Father. Um, above the altar, and I know it, it doesn't look like that, but there's two altars within the image. There's the, the Catholic altar that's used in the sacred liturgy, but then there's the altar of the cross, okay? Um, and then the Father blessing the world and pouring out the Holy Spirit. And the words, uh, graces and mercy, I don't know if I pointed them out in the, in the picture, um, but the words graces and mercy appear in Latin to the right side uh, in the vision, okay? Now, the thing that's so important about this, and I remember the day that, it, that I noticed it, it was like being hit in the face with a brick, but I realized what I was looking at was the Holy of Holies. In the Old Testament, in the time of Moses, they had the tabernacle. The outer portion of the tabernacle, the outer room was called the holy place. The inner room was the Holy of Holies. Within the Holy of Holies was the Ark of the Covenant. And there's Mary, the new Ark. The high priest was the only one that could enter with a sacrifice. In this case, Jesus is entering the Holy of Holies. He's offering himself on the altar of the cross, sprinkling his own blood on the altar. And above that, we have the presence of God, the presence of the Father that would descend um, above the altar and the Ark within the Holy of Holies. And in that depiction, when Jesus died and entered into the Holy of Holies, that would have only happened on one day and once a year. And that day was the Day of Atonement. So what we're looking at in that vision, not only that vision, but the crucifixion of Jesus is an exact replica of the Holy of Holies as uh, recorded in the Old Testament. The only difference is the vessels of worship, the holiest vessels of worship, the Ark, the sacrifice, the altar, and our, our people. And it's the Virgin Mary and Jesus, again, the altar being the cross, and then the presence of God the Father that would that would descend upon uh, above the ark and the altar and the Holy of Holies. So the entire thing um, draws us back to the Day of Atonement. And what was the Day of Atonement about? The Day of Atonement was about uh, conversion, repentance, um, reparation or atonement, fasting, and prayer, okay? Uh, if you didn't watch the first video, go back and I, I kind of go through what about what the Day of Atonement is according to Christian theology, okay? Um, so we have conversion, Eucharist, praying the Rosary for Atonement, um, and the promise of peace through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, okay? Now I want to focus in on the word peace. Um, if you're familiar with the diary of Faustina, you'll see that Jesus told Faustina that the world will not have peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. And he also told her that I do not wish to punish mankind, but to heal it by pressing it to my merciful heart. And we'll get to that, the second one in a minute. But the promise of peace. We know peace has been promised at Fatima by Our Lady. It's been promised by heaven 
and it's impossible for heaven to lie. So it's only a matter of time before the Immaculate Heart of Mary triumphs and the world is given peace. But what Jesus is telling us, two really important messages within the message of divine mercy itself is the chaplet itself points back to the, the prayer taught by the angel that we need to make reparation. And the chaplet is actually a prayer of reparation. That's what we're doing. And the world will not have peace until it turns with trust to his merciful heart. And the merciful heart of Jesus is the Eucharist. Um, this is what I was saying in the, in the first video. We're being called back to the Eucharist in great trust and especially on the Feast of Divine Mercy. Okay, so that being that the world will not have peace until it turns with trust to Jesus is to say that in, the world eventually will because the promise of peace has already been made. But the way to get to that promise of Fatima is to live the message of divine mercy, to come to Jesus in the Eucharist, to repent of our sins, to come to him wholeheartedly and sincerely. Just pour ourselves out. You know, it's what he said. It doesn't matter if a sinner was, as, you know, their sins were as scarlet. One confession, one reception of Holy Communion on Divine Mercy Sunday, and they're washed white as snow, not to mention the amazing grace that he gives um, uh, along with that, okay? So the message of Divine Mercy is not a new devotion. It's a continuation of the message of Fatima and clearer instructions on how we get to the promised peace for the world as promised by Our Lady of Fatima, which bring us, brings us again to the word peace and the reality of what the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is. Okay, um, I think it's safe to say that Mary would not promise peace to the world differently than Jesus promised peace to the world. Um, Jesus said in the Gospel, Peace I live with, leave with you, my peace I give to you, not do I give it um, as the world gives. So this peace is heavenly in origin. It's an act of God. It's not, um, it's not peace like we know peace when there's no war. Okay? It's a heavenly peace. It's the, it's the Holy Spirit. Um, it's an event. A second Pentecost, if you will, on a global scale. Because eventually Jesus will heal the world by pressing it to his most merciful heart. Now really think, of, if you just take a minute and think about what that means. I wish to heal the world. That means transform it by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, how I wish it were already on fire, he says. Okay. Um, Pope Benedict, when he was in Fatima, uh, said this. Let us pray for a hastening of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And then went on to say, this is the equivalent to our praying for the coming of the kingdom of God. That would be to say the fulfillment of the Our Father that we pray every Sunday at Mass. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is nothing less than the coming of the kingdom of God, according to the Pope when she will crush the head of the serpent and usher in a new age of peace. Um, this is a new existence in the world in which righteousness dwells. It's healed by Jesus pressing it to his most merciful heart, the Eucharist. It is a Eucharistic reign of Christ, an age of peace in which Jesus present in the Eucharist is adored and glorified. And basically, Jesus is coming to the world in the same way that he came to the world the first time, and that's through his mother. Only he's coming on a much bigger, bigger level. Um, so the only conclusion we can come to, um, knowing that the divine mercy is preparing us for the second coming of Jesus, the world will not have the promise of Fatima until it turns with trust to his mercy, is to say that eventually, sooner or later it will, because we've already been promised the peace. And the conclusion that we come to is that the Day of Atonement, which is the Day of the Lord, the culmination of these days of mercy, the uh, triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and the coming of the Kingdom of God are all one and the same. They're all one event. And this is what we're being called to. This is what we have to look forward to. Um, like I said, it gives you an unshakable faith in knowing what's coming. And uh, 
It's not to say that we won't have to go through some bad things. We're going to. We're going to have to go through some bad things. But knowing what's at the end of it, that will give you all the strength, all the grace, and all the faith, and all the hope that you will ever need. I pray for you. May God bless you. And may God love you.